uh, and some uh, degrees of expressivity. Because, for example, the neural networks that we tested are incredibly small. They're a handful of nodes, but the neural networks that are used by industry and practice are millions of nodes, and there is no way we could possibly scale to that. Furthermore, I elided this assumption, but we also uh, stay constrained to linear arithmetic assignments in the program model, which means that we can handle rectified linear unit activation functions for neural networks, but it's also common to have sigmoidal ones, and that would be beyond the scope of what we can do right now. Um, but, so we are looking into ways to handle loops the, uh, just to compare to some other like synthesis and, uh, and verification tools that can handle similar properties. And a problem that we're currently experiencing is that if you naively want to unroll to some bounded depth, you create really large formulas where then the SMT techniques don't scale. So, but it is a, it's, yeah, that's a good question and there's lots of ways that we hope to improve uh, expressivity and performance in the future, so. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Anna, and I'm going to talk about uh, reasoning on uh, divergent computations with coaxioms, and this is a joint work with uh, Francesco Danino and uh, Elena Zucca from the University of Genoa, Italy. Okay, so <laughs> let's, uh, <clears throat> let me have a, a brief outline of the talk. So first of all, I will introduce, uh, motivate and introduce the notion of a coaxium uh, that uh, we have introduced uh, at uh, uh, ESOP uh, this year. And <clears throat> then uh, I will show why coaxioms are useful for uh, uh, modeling uh, non-terminating uh, non-termination uh, uh, in the conductive big step operational semantics. Then I will give some uh, uh, details uh, on the result contained in, in, uh, in the Uppsala paper. And if uh, I have time, discuss uh, some interesting points concerning uh, future work. Okay, so uh, inference systems are uh, widespread uh, formalism for uh, uh, specifying uh, type systems and uh, operational semantics of uh, uh, programming languages and uh, they consist of a set of uh, inference rules and but what is the semantics of this set of, of inference rules uh, actually there are uh, different different ways uh, to to give a semantics to an inference system uh, first of all the semantics of an inference system is uh, a set of judgments built on top of some predicates okay the, the most standard approach is called the, the inductive uh, uh, approach, the inductive semantics, and can be defined uh, <coughs> following uh, the proof theoretic semantics based on uh, the notion of uh, finite derivation. So uh, it's the, the, uh, the set of judgments for which there exists uh, a finite derivation, uh, also called uh, uh, proof tree, uh, which, of course, <clears throat> must satisfy uh, the, <clears throat> the constraint that uh, every node with uh, the, uh, their children uh, must correspond to a certain rule in the system. Uh, but then it is also possible to consider the conductive semantics of an inference system, which is, in terms of uh, uh, proof theoretic semantics, uh, amounts to, to define the set of all judgments can, that can be derived uh, with either finite or infinite derivations, derivation. And uh, another interesting thing is that uh, there are two equivalent, uh, there is another uh, equivalent way for defining both the inductive and the conductive uh, semantics uh, by following the uh, fixed point approach. So for the inductive semantics, this means considering the set of judgment, which is the least fixed point of the one-step inference, inference operator that, uh, uh, that is defined by the inference rules. And for the conductive uh, semantics, of course, is the greatest fixed point. And, and the fixed point semantics is important because uh, uh, gives us um, uh, the possibility of uh, using the induction principle to prove uh, soundness result for judgment interpreted in an inductive way or completeness result for uh, a judge, uh, sorry, or, or use the conductive principle for uh, 
completeness result regarding judge, judgments that are derived considering the conductive uh, semantics. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to show um, two examples where uh, <clears throat> we uh, need that there are cases where we want uh, the inductive uh, semantics, we need the inductive semantics, but other cases where the, the intended semantics uh, is the conductive one. So let, let us consider this very simple uh, judgment uh, built on top of this member predicate uh, that checks whether uh, a number is an element of a, a list, and a list, can, mm, a list of integers, and, but the list can be also uh, infinite, okay? So these are the uh, obvious uh, rules, okay? And if we consider the inductive semantics, uh, then we discover that this is the, the right semantics, and for instance, we can easily prove that two is, is a member of both this finite uh, list and this uh, infinite alternating list, okay? And, <clears throat> And for, for in this case, in this case, uh, we just need uh, finite derivations because to show a witness, we just need the, uh, a finite number of steps. Okay, and what in, it is interesting if we turn to consider the conductive interpretation uh, of this uh, example, then we allow also infinite derivations. Then of course uh, we we uh, we derive too many judgments that we don't want to be valid. And, and actually we are able to prove that any uh, element, any number belongs to an infinite list. So this is, uh, this is not the intended semantics. But now let us consider these other predicates and the corresponding judgment, okay? Uh, checking whether an integer is uh, greater or equal than all elements in a list. And again, the list can be either finite or inf infinite. Okay, in this case, the inductive semantics does not work because we are not able to provide a, a finite derivation uh, to prove that uh, uh, number two is greater or equal to all elements of this uh, infinite alternating list. Okay, so, so we need to switch to the conductive semantics. And with the conductive semantics, we are able uh, to prove that uh, two is greater or equal than all elements, both in this finite uh, list, and for, for that we have, uh, of course, a finite derivation, and for this infinite list, we uh, construct this infinite uh, derivation. So, so far, so good, but, uh, but the, the important thing is that uh, the, the semantics of an inference system uh, has this uh, uh, all or nothing approach. So, you have a, an inference system, all judgments that are defined in, in, in that system follow either the inductive interpretation or the conductive interpretation, okay? So, so here now we have a problem because uh, for member, uh, we have an, an inductive, we need an inductive interpretation and for the other uh, predicate, we need the conductive interpretation. This means that it cannot coexist in the same inference system. Uh, for instance, uh, assume that we want to define together with a member and greater or equal the, the predicate max, uh, checking whether an element is at the maximum element of a list, defined in terms of these two predicates. We cannot do that, okay? Uh, and the other thing is that, okay, if we turn to, cons the, to define, the, to consider a, a recursive definition for this predicate, max, then we discover that both the inductive and the conductive semantics uh, do not work. So, because for the inductive semantics, of course, we are not able to uh, derive that two is the maximum element of this uh, infinite alternating list, okay, but uh, if the conductive semantics, then, uh, then again we derive too many judgments. So we are able to prove that, for instance, three uh, is a, a maximum element for this alternating list. And this is, of course, wrong. Okay? By, by applying an infinite, uh, uh, infinite times this, this uh, inference rule. Okay? So how can we... Okay, so this is another problem. So how can, how can we solve this problem? So in ESOP, we um, <clears throat> propose to solve this problem by 
introducing this notion of coaxium. And coaxium are a way for uh, extending the notion of inference system and, uh, and uh, enhancing, enhancing the expressive power of an inference system by uh, combining in a smooth way both the uh, inductive and conductive approach. So why uh, do we have the both uh, approaches here? Because uh, basically, uh, okay, consider this, this uh, inference systems where we have added this special uh, axiom, which we call coaxium, okay, uh, with this bullet. And so uh, we consider still a, a conduction because we allowed uh, inf infinite derivation by using these uh, two rules. Okay, uh, but so what? What the purpose of uh, of uh, coaxions? So the purpose of coaxion is uh, to define in an inductive way, together with to the other two rules, the the set of judgments that are allowed to be used in infinite uh, derivations. So in a sense, we we uh, with coaxion we we filter out some of the infinite derivation we don't like. Okay, and, <clears throat> and the, the nice thing is that this can be uh, characterized also in terms of uh, fixed point semantics, uh, because actually what we are defining here is uh, a greatest fixed point uh, that must be included in uh, the set of judgments that can be derived in an inductive way from uh, the rules extended with coaxioms. Okay, so we have uh, a least fixed point that limits uh, the, the greatest fixed point, okay? <clears throat> so in this way, of course, we can still derive that two is the maximum element for our infinite list because uh, we can provide the usual infinite derivation. But then we have also to show that all all judgments in uh, this uh, derivation can be derived uh, in, in a finite way. So we find the derivation by using also the, the coaxium. So basically the coaxium uh, forces us to choose uh, elements that are member of the list, okay? And, and for this reason, we cannot uh, derive any longer that three is a maximum element because, of course, we we sh uh, we we can use we could uh, derive an infinite derivation, but we also have to show that this infinite derivation that in involves uh, this infinite derivation for this infinite derivation, these judgments can be can be derived also. Uh, in an inductive way by using the coaxium, and this is of course not possible because three is not a member of the list. Okay, so that's that's uh, the the idea. So the nice thing is that of course in this way uh, we can also encode the standard inductive uh, uh, conductive semantics. So here we have just one inference system where we can define uh, all three elements. And for member, we don't provide any coaxion, so this means that we we we, uh, we can we filter out all possible infinite derivations. This amount to say we are considering the inductive semantics. Here, the coaxion does not filter uh, nothing because we can consider any uh, judgment. Uh, so this corresponds to standard conduction, and this is something in between. So a, a, a fixed point which is in between the the, the least and the greatest fixed point. So now let us consider uh, why this is useful for uh, big step operational semantics and for modeling divergent computations. So let us consider uh, the standard called by value lambda calculus, okay, with uh, the, the, the two uh, rules for the big step semantics. And so we have an inference system. So what do we, so if we, we consider uh, we interpret this inference system in an inductive way, then of course we can, uh, uh, and we consider for instance uh, this uh, divergent expression, we cannot derive any judgment for this expression because we, we would need to have an infinite derivation. So we cannot uh, uh, non-termination. Uh, another possibility considered by several authors, me included, is to switch uh, to the conductive semantics. So now we are able to uh, construct an infinite derivation for this judgment, 
okay? But the problem is that here we derive too many judgments because there is no uh, constraints on, on the value that can be returned. So we, are, we get this strange semantics, which is uh, fully non-deterministic for this non-terminating uh, expression. Another possible approach has been <laughs> proposed by Cousot and Cousot, uh, and it consists of, on a stratified approach. So um, we have the usual evaluation judgment, which uh, is interpreted in, a, in an inductive way. Okay? Uh, so this has to do with uh, terminating expressions, returning a certain value, usual way. And then uh, we introduce another uh, judgment for modeling non-terminating expressions, okay? So here, for instance, this rules model non-termination for uh, fully deterministic cobalt value left to right strategy. Okay. The point is that, uh, of course, these models non-termination, so this judgment requires a conductive uh, interpretation. So the, the two systems have to be separ separated. And, actual, and actually, these judgments here are not re really premises, uh, but they are side conditions because we are, we are, not, we are not defining in, in, uh, in the same uh, inference system. We cannot do that, uh, both judgments. So our solution is to merge all things together and to have coaxiums, okay? So what we do is we use just one judgment by adding this notion of the result and adding this special label representing a non-terminating uh, expression. So then we have that an expression can either return V, a value, this means that it terminates and returns a value, or it, if it returns this special uh, value infinity, means that uh, the evaluation expression uh, does not terminate, okay? And then uh, we don't have to duplicate and to have two, two separate systems. We don't have to duplicate uh, the rule for application. We have just one rule. And we need to add a coaxium saying that, uh, okay, for, for infinite derivation, what we can only derive are judgments that have to do with non-termination, okay? So, so in this way, uh, we are able to derive for this example, the omega, uh, only one judgment, one judgment saying that the big omega uh, diverges, but we cannot derive any other judgment saying that the omega returns some value because, because the, uh, for, for the other values, we cannot construct, uh, construct a finite proof uh, tree because the only, the only coaxium, the only axiom can, that can be used has to do with non termination. Okay, so uh, let's, let's see what uh, is the uh, uh, technical content of the, of, of the work. So we present the this type of operational semantics with coaxium, both for, of the lambda calculus and of a more complex calculus, which is a, a Java-like imperative uh, calculus with notion of uh, stack frame and heaps. And for both, we, we, prove, we prove conservativity, which means that uh, uh, adding the coaxium for uh, non-termination non uh, will not introduce spur uh, judgment for terminating, uh, for terminating expressions. So we don't get uh, spurious values, okay? And, and for the lambda calculus, we prove that uh, the big step of operational is uh, equivalent to the standard small step operational semantics, both for uh, terminating and non-terminating uh, expressions. And then we, uh, we also proved type soundness, and type soundness uh, is proven in this, in, in this way. So if uh, E is well typed and uh, we, E does not diverge, uh, sorry, does not uh, terminate with a value according to the big step semantics, then it, uh, it must uh, it must not terminate, must diverge according to the big step operational semantics. And this is, is proved by uh, bounded conduction on the rules directly, um, which is the generalization of the conduction principle uh, to our case uh, with coaxium. For the imperative Java like calculus, we are able to prove uh, uh, again a uh, soundless result 
um, of course, the claim is a bit uh, more complex because we have to deal with uh, the notion of uh, stack frame and heap and the fact that they have to agree to the type environment. But uh, I mean, the, the proof is the, the, the structure of the proof is, is exactly the same. And uh, <coughs> okay, so. Um, all proofs uh, can be found in, in the paper, but uh, proofs are uh, only manually checked. So we, what we would like as a further research is to try to mechanize these proofs, and then to have um, a deeper comparison with other approach that allows, you, allows, uh, that allows us to model uh, non-termination with a big step uh, semantics based on this uh, notion of definitional interpreters that use stack counters that limit uh, the, the height of the, of the proof tree and, and then allows, uh, uh, allow us to use uh, induction. Uh, and then, uh, of course, we would like to uh, uh, in, use the co also for, for uh, considering trace semantics. Uh, which uh, allows us to have more support to prove uh, uh, properties about non-terminating programs like uh, uh, observable equivalence or use of uh, limited resources. Thank you. <laughs>